Hello everybody, Scott Golden with the uh, Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. We've got over 475 audios available for you to check out. Variety of topics, hopefully something you like, hopefully many things you like. If this channel is helpful to you, please drop a subscribe and a like and some comments. That'd be wonderful. In any event, uh, this audio is about brokenheartedness. If you are getting over a relationship that has ended either expectedly or unexpectedly, toxic or a, a uh, mutual break, whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out. There's many, many uh, benefits to kind of getting a new view of yourself afterwards. In, in any event, um, there's a couple ways to do that. You can go to at PO Perception on Twitter, or you can uh, reach out uh, on the website, and that's available in the About Me section of uh of this YouTube channel. You can get the information you need there. In any event, reach out when you feel confident, comfortable, or when you feel it's necessary. In so, uh, we're going to talk about brokenheartedness. So eight to ten signs that you might have a broken heart. One, your stress level is, is rising. So this can come out in physical ways like nausea, vomiting, uh, dizziness, uh, heart palpitations, um, fixation of thoughts, getting in a thought loop you can't get out of. And then that, again, those things would kind of branch over into physical pain. So uh, if, you're, if you're mentally stressed out, you may not be able to focus, you may not be able to think clearly, you might get stuck in the middle of sentences and, and not be um, you know, able to recover or get things done. Your time management may be off. All of these things can be uh, you know, kind of s ideas that would indicate you might have a broken heart, especially if this is around the time of a recent breakup. The next is depression. That's the next logical progression. The more you fixate on something, not going the way you intended and not meeting your standards, the more likely you are to become depressed about the circumstances not aligning with what you would have preferred them to be. So the more you become focused on that negative stuff, the more you um, begin to ruminate, which is the next thing. Rumination on the past can become extremely damaging because the past is something we cannot change. If we perceive that the past is all, all that we're ever going to see or, or repeat, then that becomes problematic as well, uh, which leaves us feeling empty. The emptiness is, is another factor in the, in the healing process. That is, if you fixate on the loss long enough, you'll feel as though nothing in your life has the value it once had. Therefore, you feel out of control in your own life. Uh, that can lead to a lot of challenges. You may even go back to negative or addictive or self-destructive behaviors, drinking, drugs, promiscuity, gambling, any sort of thing to make you feel better for the moment, but your life, meanwhile, feels out of control because you are looking for that sense of security you lost through the relationship, then you may withdraw from the, the, the boundary of everything, and that is there. Uh, when you get to a place where you are withdrawing socially, people may check on you, and then again, they may not. If they don't, you're going to get saddened and kind of frustrated because they're not checking on you in the way that you think they should. When they do, though, you may push them away, so it may become a catch-22 sort of um, situation where you want people close but not close enough to actually do anything or hold you accountable, which leads to challenges because then people don't know how to approach you, which leaves you alone anyway, and ultimately there's challenges related that way. Uh, it's an interesting challenge in that regard for sure and it's not necessarily something that most of us would want or need. The next thing to consider when dealing with broken heartedness is the possibility or the probability in some cases of grieving. You're going through the process of letting things go, you're going through the process of grieving, and you become exhausted. You may go through the stages of grief, including the disbelief, the anger, the frustration, the bartering with a higher power, then the resignation and the withdrawal. All of these things are natural and normal, but if you feel the need to grieve the loss of the relationship, chances are you have had at least a partially broken heart, which can be 
damaging on multiple levels. In any event, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.